Hey guys, Yips here, and today I'm going to be making a video regarding Reap Soul usage. And the reason I wanted to make a video regarding Reap Soul usage is because Reap Souls is a very, very important ability of Warlock, and what's going to really make the difference between you doing, um, you know, more damage in a fight or less damage of a fight is going to be when you decide to use your Reaps. And it's not always obvious when you should be using your Reap Souls because there's many different scenarios and many different ways to use it on a fight. And I'm going to quickly go over some of the more beginner tips and then maybe go into some more advanced things and advanced talks about Reap Soul. And hopefully throughout this video you guys can get a better understanding of how you should be using it and maybe think on fights that you're doing um, the optimal ways for you to be utilizing your Reap. So, anyways. So, obviously the first way that you want to be using Reap Souls is the, the common two stack. So, that's when you're doing, you know, two UAs, Reap, two UAs, and that's when you have two Reaps. Um, it's you know the most, probably the most basic way to go about using reaps. So I'm just waiting until I get to here, and this is probably the way you want to be going about doing it for most of the fight, just to get most of your UAs under the reap soul buff. So I'm just waiting until I proc another one here, and I'll show you what I mean by that. And throughout the fight, this is a really good way about doing it. So you see here, I get two. I'll UA, UA, and then I'll reap, and then I'll UA twice, and they're all going to be under the effect of this reap. Now that's one way to go about doing it, um, and the if you guys didn't know the reason that you do that is because when you cast two UAs in a row, I'll show you on this, by the time your second UA gets on the target, the first one hasn't started dealing damage yet. So when you press your reap after the two are affected or are applied to the target, they'll both be affected by the full duration of the reap soul buff. And then you can get two additional casts in after that that will also be affected by the reap souls. So that's just one way to go about doing it, and that's the most basic way to go about doing it. It's just doing the two stack and just repeating that over and over and over and over again. But there will be times in the fight where you'll get like five or six reap souls in a row. There will be times in the fight where you'll get two, and then you'll get two again immediately after you pop them, and you don't have any shards left and things like that. So there's a lot of uncertainty to know what to do. Um, so aside from using the basic you know, two usage of reap souls, what do you do when you get more reaps? Okay, so what you do when you get more reaps, so you get three or four reap souls before you're able to proc again because you don't have enough shards, say I have four now, what you're going to want to do is cast one UA, reap, and then just drain. You want to optimize your drain up time during like the high stack reaps, and you just want to make sure that you're fitting all your UAs eventually. You see my um, reap starts to like burn down a little bit. This is when you want to start dumping the rest of your shards into your, um, into your target and you see all these are going to be affected by the reap souls. So what happens in a situation where you're not really worried about anything besides doing your maximum damage is when you get like, you know, more than two reaps, you just want to UA once and then reap and then, you know, kind of wait around until the reap's almost over. Like, you know, there's 12 seconds left. Just dump the rest of your shards in there, get them all under that reap buff and go on with your life. So those are the two different basic ways of going for a reap. Like, you know, if you have more than two shards or two reaps, you wanna be doing that. If you have, you know, two reaps, you wanna be doing the four combo. If you have more than that, you can just kind of do whatever you want, but mainly you just wanna maintain uptime on UA, especially if you're running Contagion, you always wanna make sure you have maximum uptime on uh, UA during the reap. And so, yeah, that's how you wanna basically go about using multiple reap stacks. Now. That's the basic way, but there's a lot more advanced ways to go about using Reap. And the reason there's more advanced ways to go about using Reap is because on fights, it's not static, right? You, the boss fight isn't you stand there for four minutes. The boss stays at the same health percentage. You don't get any trinket procs, um, no ad spawn, nothing like that, and the boss dies. It's very rarely that's the case. Often, you know, the boss is getting below 20% where your Doom Guard's hitting it way, way harder. Oftentimes, during the fight, you'll get multiple Reap stacks during the fight you're using pots you're using different things your trinkets are proccing so there's a whole lot of other situations on the fight that are going on that is going to allow you to utilize your reap souls and you want to think about reap souls kind of like a, a trinket or like you know a big cooldown that another class would have that warlocks don't you want to use it and stack it with other cooldowns to get the most effect out of those reaps and what i mean by that is you want to be stacking it with things like bloodlust you want to be stacking it with things like your pot you want to be stacking it with things like I don't know, your racial, you want to be stacking it with things like Wrath of Consumption. If adds spawn on the boss and you're able to kill them, you get Wrath of Consumption. Your dots are dealing 10% increased damage for 20 seconds. That's when you want to be using your Reap because not only are you getting the Reap damage percentage, but you're also getting the Wrath of Consumption damage percentage. Um, before you press Reap, are you making sure your dots are fully refreshed? Are you going to be able to get the maximum amount of drain off? There's a bunch of different things that go into advanced Reap usage, and I want to cover a few of them today 
talk with you about them and hopefully you know even if you're not able to incorporate all of them into your gameplay if you're able to add some of them along with the basic tips um hopefully it's going to help you do more damage and help you understand the ability just a little bit better so when attacking a boss okay let's say i'm playing effigy because most warlocks have to play effigy single target right and you're generating reap stacks you want to make sure that you're refreshing on pandemic every single time until your reap stack until you start reaping okay and the reason for this is you want to get the maximum amount of drain lifetime that you can during your um your reaps so i'm just gonna make sure i'm not gonna say shoal card shard capped here okay so i get two here so i'm gonna refresh the dots of my effigy my boss dots of refresh are pretty good and i'm gonna go in with the two stack here and reap it and basically the idea is you want to make sure that you still have duration on your dots left when you pop your reap so you're able to get some drains uh drain life in because if i was to pop my reap as i like need to refresh my dots after i do my ua stacking i'm not gonna have any time to drain life okay and that's not good because drain life is hugely affected by um by reaps so that's that's a really really important tip that i want to do you guys like try to make sure you're popping reaps after you have refreshed your dots obviously on a boss fight where it's really really hectic don't worry about it right like don't don't freak out about having to do that um on a boss fight where there's a lot of shit going on and you don't know like what's really happening and you know what i mean like don't don't do that on that sort of situation but on, on a boss fight where you like you know you have the time to think about it you've cleared the content a lot and you want to really be maximizing your dps that's one way to do it make sure you're refreshing on pandemic timers so when your reap stacks do happen um, so that you can go in and do that big damage and also be able to drain life during that reap for that extra DPS that reap does give you on drain life. So that's uh, one tip to give you guys. The other tip is to work around your potion. So assuming you're using potion of prolonged power or even deadly grace, you want to be make sure you're saving reap stacks for when that comes up in the boss fight. So say the boss fight's four minutes, right? You're obviously going to have your pre-pot, okay? and the boss fight is going to go on so let's say you start with 12 reaps obviously you're going to be using those but let's say you don't start with 12 reaps let's say it's a progression fight and you've died and you start the boss fight with zero reap stacks so you've done this and you pre-pot and you go in on the boss basically what you want to be doing is as soon as you get that two stack you want to go off as soon as you get it you want to go off as soon as possible on the beginning of the boss fight you just want to be trying to use your reaps as effectively as possible during that first potion while you're generating reaps but then after that if the boss fight is only four minutes you have to think about this logically right when are you going to want to use your second pot well you're going to want to be using your second pot when the boss gets below 25 percent hp or somewhere in that like range so whenever the boss fight is going to take approximately one more minute that's when you're going to be wanting to use your prolonged potion Potion. and the reason for that is because your doom guard is going to be hitting way way harder during that time and it's just like a multiplier effect right if your doom guard's hitting harder and you have a damage modifier that effect get multiplied they don't get added so it's just more damage overall so that's how you kind of want to be thinking now with that line of thinking you also want to say okay that means i want to save reap souls for my for my pot so a lot of times in boss fights what will happen is I'll, I'll be attacking the boss, say Bloodless phase is over, I'll be attacking the boss, I'll get two reaps, you know, okay, I'll go off. Maybe I'll do, like, you know, maximum, like, two of these. I maybe, maybe even only one, like, one stack like that between Lust and the last two minutes of the boss, and then I'll just be saving, saving reaps, you know what I mean? I'll just be saving reaps and waiting for my second pot, so when I go into my second pot, I have the maximum amount of damage that I can to be affected by that 2500 intellect, because that's really important, right? 2500 intellect is a lot, and if you can get your dots to tick even harder during that phase, you're going to end up doing so, so much more damage. So, you generally, my rule of thumb is you kind of want to be saving around like 6 or so reaps. Obviously, RNG is dependent on this, but you generally want to be saving about 6 reaps for your second pot, so when you do end up popping that, you have a lot of extra damage to what you could throw on the boss. So like here, I can pop my pot, and then I get to go in on the boss with my reaps. And you see I have 30 seconds of reap, but let's just see what happens during this, right? So I pop my blood fury, I'm stacking all my cooldowns, right? Let's see what happens. So the thing is, during that six second reap stack or whatever, you're generating, or should be generating, torment to souls, right? Usually, see there's one. So the idea here is, you're generating all these souls that you're using during your pot. So generally, you're gonna have around 100% uptime on reap during that pot which is super super important and the reason that's super important is because you want these uh, effects to multiply together so yes you still want to do those two stacks constantly and yes you still want to do things like that but you also have to be thinking you know on the boss fight when is it going to be effective for me to use my reaps right so that's that's one thing you see i was basically able to maintain a hundred percent uptime on reap 
during this pot, which is really, really important, something you really, really want to get in the habit of doing on boss fights, and something you really, really want to get in the habit of doing in general. You want to be making sure you're using those reaps at optimal times when the boss fight is happening. So with that covered, I want to talk about just a few more situations about reaping before I end the video. One more important situation about reap souls is during um, a boss fight like Urshok, if your guild is not lusting at the beginning, you want to be making sure you're saving reaps for the bloodlust phase. Obviously, that's the same thing as your pot. But the thing that I didn't touch on is if what if you have more than one thing to dot, right? Like, what if it's a boss fight with adds and things like that? And on a boss fight, like, say, Helia, I don't know if anyone has done Helia yet, but in phase two, when the Grime Lord and things like that are active, um, I'm not sure Helia is the best because Mythic is much different, and I'm talking about Mythic. So let's talk about a boss fight like Xavius, okay? So a boss fight like Xavius, where in phase one you have the extra ad spawning, the corrupted horror, whatever the hell he is, you want to be make sure you're saving reap stacks for the corrupted horror because when the corrupted horror spawns, not only do you have d uh, dots on the boss, the corrupted horror, but you also have it on your soul effigy. So if you're able to save reap stacks for that, you're going to be basically getting double the effect because you have basically... I mean, almost two times as many dots out, you know, aside from the soul effigy. You basically have two times as many dots out. So you're going to be getting twice the effect from the reap. So you want to be making sure that you're saving it for when um, adds do spawn. So you can get that extra benefit on the uh, on the reap on multiple dotted targets. So if you're not doing that, make sure you're doing that. If you're just like, you know, if basically what you're saying is, okay, the best way, like the most optimal way to utilize my reap, assuming nothing's happening, is only to two stack, then... You're not maximizing your DPS on every boss because there's always situations where you can use utilize like you know two target dotting with reap or you can utilize pot with reap or even on Xavius right you have all those little ads coming in if you're able to put corruption on all those little ads and they die you get this buff called wrath of consumption and when you get wrath of consumption your dots are dealing 10% increased damage so on fights like that on fights like Renferal when you kill the spiders when she goes up on fights like Ilganoth on fights like I don't know scenarios when the ads start dying you get the wrath of consumption buff and when wrath of consumption is up your dots are dealing you know two percent increased damage for each target that's died so if you end up stacking that with reap you're going to end up doing a whole lot more damage so these are a few situations where you really really want to utilize your reap and different ways to utilize your reap and i hope you, this video has helped a lot of people understand more about the usage of reap souls and i hope this um yeah just basically improves your guys gameplay so thanks for watching and i'll see you guys later